Okay, hi APChem. We are working on part two of the procedure for our graviometric analysis lab here. I uh, wanted to show you some of the equipment. Here is the crucible. This one's a metal metallic one. You know, there's porcelain kind as well. These ones are a little bit smaller, more fragile, and um, they have a tendency to break. So we're, we're going to use the metallic crucible today. Both of them have lids, uh, but this is what they look like. And you'll probably see more of in, in some kind of AP question pictured the uh, porcelain kind over here to in, in uh, uh, my right hand over here, this one. Um, you would see that one in a, an AP chem type question. So before I can start, I need to find the mass of my crucible and uh, record that. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on my milligram balance let it stabilize and then write down that mass. So I'm going to now add the unknown metal here, about two, approximately two grams and then record the mass. So I'm around 23.6, so I'm gonna get up to about 25.6-ish around there. Doesn't have to be perfect, okay? Doesn't have to be perfect, just uh, uh, want it to be accurate and um, you know, around two grams. It could be a little over, it could be a little under. All right, so looks like I pot, probably put a little too much in there. So I'm going to take a little bit out and then record this mass. That's about right. Let's see here, one more time. A little too much. Okay. Close, close the door to let it stabilize and then record the mass of the unknown with the crucible. All right, the next step is to, we're gonna light the match or light the lighter, turn on the gas, get ready to heat the uh, mass of the unknown A here and drive off the water. But first light it, then you turn on Get yourself a nice good flame. It's a little high, so I'm going to just slightly reduce it over here. And then you can turn the valve to get your nice blue cone, the hotter cone. And then I can place it underneath my uh, iron ring and my clay triangle there, the, the pipe stem triangle. Next, we take our crucible using our crucible tongs, you know, to place it on top of the flame up here so it can sit in the triangle and heat for approximately two minutes. It's not wanting to stay. Let's keep wanting to rotate. There we go. Uh, we're going to heat it for two minutes and then uh, find the mass of the crucible and the unknown. Let it cool, I mean, let it cool in between, and then heat it again for two more minutes. Let it cool in between. Do it a third heating. We want to make sure we drive off all the water so that it's truly an anhydrous compound where there isn't any uh, water being absorbed from the atmosphere in there. So I let that cook and do that, and then I'm going to find the mass and record it uh, and do that. I repeated twice for this particular unknown A, and I'll do it for both unknown B and unknown C as well. As you can see, this is a time-consuming process, but uh, good lab technique will eventually allow us to get good data, hopefully. Okay, so now after the third heat, this will be the third rec recording of the mass of sample A here on the balance. Write down the mass after the third heating. So I have all this data here that I'll put in the table for you for all the samples, same procedure. Now we're ready to transfer it into the beaker to let the unknown metal carbonate dissolve so that we can move on to part three of the reaction. Now what we're gonna do here, we have our beaker A with our stirring rod. Uh, we'll Go ahead and take out the stirring rod for right now. I'll use that in just a minute. But I'm gonna take my sample here of the unknown carbonate and dump it into the beaker. Now in the bottom here of the crucible, there's gonna be some residue of the, the solid left. So I'm gonna to need to wash it a few times and dump that into the 
beaker. All right, so taking this, I'm gonna use my wash bottle, wash the sides of the crucible, dump it in here, wash the sides of the crucible, dump it in here three times. It's really good, make sure that you've got everything off the sides. Put that in there. Now, the procedure said to add about 100 milliliters of water to dilute or to dissolve the solid here. And it looks like there's approximately like 20, 30 in there. So I'm going to use my graduate cylinder and add an additional 70 or so milliliters of water. Doesn't have to be perfect. This part uh, doesn't have to be uh, that measured because we're going to be using the precise measurements of the calcium chloride to do the stoichiometry. Then you just then you just stir this, okay, and let it dissolve. And uh, it looks like it's almost dissolved. A couple more stirs. Ready to go. So this is the sample A. Ready to go. And then I'll do sample B and C. Same, same idea here, and we'll get ready to do, it's all set up now, ready for part three of the procedure.